Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about how we send data into a form in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. We can send data into a form in several different ways, um, but one of the primary ways is to use properties on a menu item. The advantage that we have um, in sending data into a form is we can reuse a form for multiple purposes. We can control its look and feel, we can make it editable, we can change what data we want to show, really kind of anything that you can imagine um, we can change on our form, um, passing in different parameters to cause it to look one way or another. Um, this is really useful and core to the idea of um, not duplicating code, including code on a form. So let's get started and let's look at some of the primary key properties on a menu item that we need to be able to set and can set to pass data in. So right now I have this RSM vehicle service workbench menu item. It is pointing to a form object um, and the form is named RSM vehicle uh, service workbench. On this form, there's a few properties um, that are important that we can look at. Specifically, there is a property called parameters. This allows us to enter in any kind of string, um, and then we can read that string on the other side in the form. Um, so we can create multiple menu items, passing in different string values, and control how it works. The other property that I want to point out that we'll cover in more detail next is there is an enum parameter and enum type parameter. These two uh, work in conjunction and we can pass in an enum and an enum value and read those values um, inside the form. There's some additional pieces that allow us to send data into forms, um, but those aren't specifically properties on menu items. So we'll cover those in another article. So for now, what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this menu item. I can do that by pushing Control C and then Control V on my keyboard. And then I get a new menu item with the word copy at the end. I can then name this, um, you know, whatever I want. I can name it parameters. Then the key is if you just try to look at the properties right away, they'll be grayed out and you can't edit them. So it is important to double click on this menu item that's in your project um, and then uh, you can edit these properties. If you're starting from scratch, you're going to want to create a new solution and project within Visual Studio and you can add a new menu item by right clicking uh, selecting add and then um, if you've selected your project say add new item and then you can add your menu item here in this case uh, we're working with a display menu item and you can click OK. I also have a previous video on how to create a menu item. Now that we have our menu item um, let's go ahead and set the parameters property so in this case, I'm actually going to um, type in the text um, that I want to be able to read on the other side. And whatever it is, I just need to make sure that I remember this text. So I'm going to call this text enable read only. Maybe I want to make my form disabled and make it in a read only mode. So I can pass in that text right here. Next, let's look at how we read this value on the form side. The form that I'm trying to open is called RSM Vehicle Service Workbench. So I'm going to double click on it to open the designer. In this designer, the key here is I want to override the init method. The init method is a method um, that gets called by the system when the, when the form first loads and loads up all the controls. This is the best place for us usually to put code that we want to run right when the form opens and control maybe uh, what fields and, and controls are hidden or shown or what data is uh, shown. So I've already overridden the init method on this form, but if you needed to, you would right click on this methods node 
underneath the main form and select override and then scroll all the way down uh, until you see a knit in the list. Since I've overridden it already, it's not gonna show up in my list here. I can then uh, double click on my init method uh, to bring up the forms code, or you can also right click on the form itself and say view code. That will also bring up the form code editor. In this case, when you first override the init method, all you're gonna get is a method with this word super and this uh, method call to super will actually load up all the controls um, and data sources and get everything kind of uh, working. So we always wanna put our code um, after the super in, in vast majority of cases. So next I've gone ahead and added this code already to handle the menu item, but let's talk about what it does. Specifically, this first statement says if element.args and it's going to call this function called dot args dot args returns an an object of type args um, this uh, class object contains the properties that we've already set on our menu item so back on our menu item when we set this parameters property right here um, and when we run this menu item, the system's automatically going to take this parameters string and pass it into an object called args that we're able to read on um, this other side. So uh, what we're really doing here is just saying, hey, are there any args in this args object? And in our case, there should be. So if we've got an args object, the next thing we want to check is this dot parm method. This method specifically gets out whatever the string is that we've passed in into our properties here. In this case, enable read only. We could have typed whatever we wanted in here. That string then will get pulled out. And so if that string equals enabled read only, we can then take action to make this form look different or whatever we need to. In this case, I've actually taken my data source, which is called RSM vehicle. I've added the necessary underscore DS to refer to the data source object. So if I look back on my um, data source, I can see that my data source is called RSM vehicle. And so to refer to that uh, data source I need to call rsm vehicle underscore ds and so I've said rsm vehicle underscore ds allow edit is a method that's on all data sources and I've set this to false um, making it so that no user can edit any uh, data that's coming from this data source I've also set allow delete to false as well as well as allow create. This effectively is making it so this data source cannot be changed, putting it into what we would call read only mode. Um, this data source properties could have been edited directly. You know, I could have gone back to my form, select this data source and change these properties to be no, but then it would have been permanent. I wouldn't have been able to make it work one way for one menu item in a different way for a different menu item. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking at here. Lastly, I wanted to show you kind of one other helpful example. Um, on my form, I have some buttons that I would like to disable. So in this case, I have these two example buttons. They are both in this button group called form button group. What I did is I went to the properties on this form button group and I set the auto declaration to yes. After I've done that, I can now access this button group in code. So if I go back to um, my code, I'm gonna just type in the same name as the form button and then I can access its um, methods on it. So I'm gonna call dot enabled and pass in false. So basically these buttons cannot be clicked if I'm calling the menu item where we've passed in the parameters enable read only mode. 
And so all of these are gonna set it to false. I could add an else statement and say else if um, the parameter is something else like enable. Um, and then I could set these to be true or I could just make it so um, if I pass in anything that's blank or anything other than enable read only, um, then uh, all these values are gonna be true. So that's probably the preferred way, but I could come in here and control each and every state. But it's usually gonna be a lot easier if I just leave this off. And so now if I look back again, if I'm calling this version of the menu item, it's gonna pass an enable read only. If I call my other menu item, which was the one I had initially, it's not gonna pass in anything in parameters. And so it's never gonna go into this if statement and it's gonna leave my data source enabled um, and all the rest. Okay, I think that's mostly all I have. There are a few other ways that we can pass data into a form and I'll cover those separately. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.